Why, why did you ask me 100 rupees? He don't know, he don't know. He don't know, he wanted to scam me. That's right, we're not here for the first time. No, you and that. It's not our no. first day here. Even after like making sure of the price, he still tried to ask more when we arrived. Be aware of taxes. <laughs> Guys, what's the first thing that comes to mind when someone says India? <gasps> yeah, I'm sure some of you are now thinking about cows. And dirty streets. But you know what? For most of my life, I pictured this country quite differently. I always thought of it as this mysterious and beautiful land. You know, a place where everybody in the morning does yoga and no animal is ever hurt due to religion that worships nature. <sighs> but you know what? The saying, never meet your idols, also goes for countries. And so, in the last two months that we have spent in India, I have learned many shocking things about this land. We have been through incidents that most visitors are not able to avoid here and seen sights that can turn a beautiful holiday into a traumatic memory. I thought I would never have to say it in my life, but uh, now I know how does human flesh burning smell like. So buckle up, because in this video I will tell you about the seven worst things that almost every foreigner experiences while visiting India. As the first point to properly start this video, I would like to show you what it means to be a tourist in India. And for this, let's start our journey in Sravasti, a small village in the northern part of the country. Sravasti itself is a beautiful place, known for its big Buddhist community and is quite memorable due to its golden pagodas and temples filled with meditation cells for visiting Buddhists. But what happened to us in this small town perfectly illustrates the first thing that every foreigner should be ready for while visiting this country. So we are parked up next to this beautiful river and we thought we would have some private time, just the two of us. Sit outside and stuff, listen to the birds, look at the river. We have an entourage. There's no private time in India. Um, I don't think the camera shows us anymore, but we found out the truth. Why those people were here is that in the village, others were talking that there's foreigners on the river shore. And then one by one, like at least a hundred people came by and just to see us, just to sit five meters from us and look at us. And the guy also said that the most of them have never seen a foreigner. So they just want to see. You might have heard about this in the news, that few months ago, in the beginning of 2023, India became the most populated country on earth. And no matter if you're in a big city or a small village, there will be people around, especially when you look different from the locals, as this sparks their interest. I think I got like 15 subscribers. Woo! <laughs> 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 so basically, every foreigner visiting India should be ready to be treated like a celebrity. Which means a lot of staring, a lot of selfies and many conversations with total strangers. And just as a little tip, if you plan to travel here, learn quickly how to say no. In the West, we sometimes think that it's impolite to say no or ignore someone. No, thank you, brother. No, thank you. But here, it's an essential skill. And without it, you will be drained fast. And probably, you will become one of the millions who say they hate this country due to this intensity. It's also intense. Yet, of course, people-to-people -people interactions are not the only intense thing on this subcontinent. And many of you can most likely already guess what else is extremely intense here. But for those who don't yet know the answer, here's a little clue. Bruh. 
crossing the street Indian style. Yes, for a first timer, crossing the street in this country can be a shocking event. Woohoo! Still alive. And on a first look, it might seem like an absolute mayhem, where cars, bikes, cows, camels, elephants, and pedestrians all use the same narrow roads. And I will come clean to you guys. Even after two months of driving here, I still get nervous every time I jump on the wheel. And even editing videos with all of this street noise makes me quite anxious. But for those planning to spend more time in India, I have good news. Because when looking at the locals, it seems that humans can adapt to every environment. And for them, even sleeping in the middle of this chaos seems like a common thing. <laughs> He's snoring in the middle of all of this. How is it possible? He's numb to the noise. Completely numb to the noise. But don't worry, there are actually good ways to navigate those crazy streets in a relatively stressless way. But we will talk more about this a bit later on the topic of prices and scams. No. But as a third thing that might come as a shock to many visitors, I would like to talk about something that has made this country world famous. Almost every country in the world has an Indian restaurant. And on many different occasions, it has been ranked in the top five cuisines in the whole world. But what we realized quickly is that Indian food here is quite different from what we were used to back home. Vegetarian. And there are two main reasons for this. First of which is that Indians here are not as picky with the ingredients as we are used to. So for example, if you order butter chicken here, it is quite common to have bones and ligaments in the sauce, which can kind of ruin the eating experience. And of course, the second thing is the ungodly amount of spices that Indians use in their food. <laughs> what happened? But like, the air is spicy. I'm not gonna lie, we wanted to also make a food video here. But when I started editing it, I understood that our whole Indian food video would have looked exactly like this. <coughs> it's quite spicy. Fire food? My red is turning face by every bite. <laughs> Eating spicy food the whole day is a very big challenge. I can't fit anymore. I'll see if somebody wants those. He seemed happy about it. But whilst continuing on the topic of food, there is yet another thing most tourists are not able to avoid. In short, bellies of locals are built a little bit different than the ones of foreigners. And almost every other traveler that we met had the same problems as us. My belly has been aching two days. <laughs> I've been to this push nine times today. It's, it's not a nice thing. So yes, although we tried hard to avoid it, but India still got us. I thought early socks being sick in the van. Spent the past three days in the bed, I'm trying to sleep, but it's not very productive. So everyone who visits this country should know that traveler's diarrhea is very common here. And this is also the reason why I think that one week in India is definitely not enough. Because in that case, a small illness could potentially ruin the whole trip. And now I wanted to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is me. So thank you me for putting in all the hard work. And of course, I don't know why it's here. And of course, thank you Lizu for putting up with me. <laughs> Yeah, this video is actually not sponsored, but I still wanted to let you know that if you do enjoy the content and would like to help this channel stay on the road, then we have our Patreon page linked uh, down in the description below where we put the, out some extra content and uh, yeah, send out postcards and things like this for our supporters. And also, if you yet haven't, uh, then you should check out our Instagram because that has like most up-to-date travel information. 
I'm sure most of you don't even know that we are actually in Nepal right now. But anyways, now back to India and as a fifth thing, I want to talk about something that can really traumatize a visitor if not prepared correctly. Some of you might already know it, but India has one of the oldest surviving cultures on earth. And so some of the rituals and customs of this land can be off-putting or downright crazy to some tourists. For example, children as beggars are accepted and quite a common sight here. And sadly, most of the time they are sent on the streets by a mafia-like organization who makes money of them. But also seeing death and dead bodies can be quite common in certain parts of the country. That was a body that's been prepared for, for burning tonight. For example, when visiting the holy city of Varanasi, it is nearly impossible to avoid such sights. This is a person over there. And I thought I would never have to say it in my life, but uh, now I know how does human flesh burning smell like. So, especially when traveling with children, research your route well and be ready for some deep conversations about different customs and ways of life. Alrighty, and now let's talk about the topic all of us have been waiting for. And let's together see how did locals try to scam us and relieve us from our money and savings. This one, two, four, five. Negotiations. Sadly, it's no secret that many tourists end up being scammed in India. No, thank you, brother. And for this reason, we decided to divide this topic in two. First of which is called foreigner's price. The so-called foreigner price is something that every tourist will experience while hiring a taxi or buying things on the market. And I guess the best way to avoid it is to know the actual prices. For example, in Delhi, we always checked Uber prices before grabbing a taxi from streets. Okay. How much? Four hundred. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 130 an Uber. <laughs> and then, before sitting in a tuk-tuk itself, we bargained the price. No, no. 50 rupees now, I mean, no. you can lamba. No. It's not our first day. Yeah. Even after, like, making sure of the price, he still tried to ask more when we arrived. So be aware, because when it comes to taxis, then foreigner price is usually times higher than the actual one. So our taxi driver dropped us off and we paid 150 and when we gave him the money he said well 150 is not a good price and the price that was offered to us was 400 in the beginning. So it's like they started at 5 euros then we paid 2 euros and the correct price was 1 euro. And when it comes to buying food at the market we sadly had to stop it about two weeks after entering India because even after minutes of bargaining we still had to pay much higher price for fresh fruit and vegetable than we got at the local supermarket. And now to the second part of this topic, scams. So you just wanted to charge me more because I'm white? No, no. Scams for us are schemes and tricks to get money out of trusting targets. And unfortunately, Indians are quite known all over the world for them. I'm sure you've heard about the call centers targeting retired grandmas and grandpas in US and Canada. But here on the spot, they usually aim for tourists. Crazy way to scam horror foreigners again. Some, like the Indian gem scam, are well thought out and can last for days trying to get money out of single travelers with the promise of big profits in the future. I actually mentioned this one because one of our friends, Larus, experienced this scam firsthand in Agra. But others can also be simpler, like a random guy on a street asking for road tax once he sees a foreign number plate. What, why did you ask me 100 rupees? He don't know, he don't know. He don't know, he wanted to scam me. No, no, no. 
just in the middle of the road. Like. Or even better, two fishermen trying their luck in the middle of the night. We are parked next to a river and a guy, two guys just walked by, saw that uh, it's a foreign car and they wrote on a random piece of paper a parking charge. <laughs> like, there's a thousand ways how locals try to get money out of us, but that's something new. I'll just go and film them. Pic picture for the police. Sir, you wanna... Parking charge, parking charge. Picture for the police. So as you saw, while visiting India, there is a big chance that someone will try to scam you. <laughs> she came asking for money and when I said no, she said... <laughs> <laughs> That's the best reaction I've got so far. <laughs> but what we figured out fast is that there is also a simple way to know if people want to scam you. And to test this, you only have to have your phone because every scammer is afraid of exposure. And if they don't want their selfies taken or try to escape and hide themselves, once filmed, you can be quite sure that their intentions were not pure. P pic picture for the police. Well, as you now probably understand, there are things in India that can totally shock a first time visitor. And yes, I know, this list could have been so much longer because things like seeing cows eating plastic bags and stepping in poop that hopefully belongs to an animal and of course I stepped in cow poop are also part of everyday life in India. But still, after all of what we have just talked about, I just have to add that India is one of the most incredible countries to visit. Yes, you're probably expecting me to now say that this land has beautiful architecture and rich culture. But at least for me, much more than interesting history, India is a country that challenges you in ways you could not even imagine. It makes you look inward and whether you like it or not, makes you a stronger person. And you know what? If you're strong enough to accept this place as it is, you will also realize that actually most locals here are kind and welcoming. And although at times it might seem that everybody just wants to scam you, then here in like every other country in the world, there are good and bad people. But simply because there are so many people living here, then statistically the chances of meeting a bad person are just a tiny bit higher than in many other places on our planet. Thank you for watching my friends and to learn more about Indian culture make sure to watch this video in the top left corner about one of the world's craziest holiday celebrations.